Hi, this is Saqib Rahman from the OrthoClips podcast series, and today I'm with Dr. Samar Hamoud, who is an assistant professor of orthopedic surgery and associate residency director at uh, Jefferson and um, Sydney Kimmel uh, School of Medicine. Uh, she's also head team physician for St. Joseph's University, uh, Philadelphia Phoenix, uh, head orthopedic surgeon of uh, Jefferson University, and team physician at uh, Bryn Athen College and Cairn University. Uh, and today's topic is going to be on management of collegiate athletes. Uh, thank you, Summer, for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Great. All right, let's get into it. So um, how did you get interested in focusing on sports medicine and collegiate athletics particularly? I mean, I'm sure you're an athlete yourself, and obviously there's some, uh, you know, there's, there's that story behind it to some extent, I would imagine. But um, anything else, any particular people uh, in your training uh, who influenced you or just how did you end up down this path? Sure. Um, so, so like you said, um, a little bit of the cliche, I, I was a collegiate athlete at UCLA. I played soccer there. Um, and that certainly has uh, uh, shaped some of it. Um, I think my collegiate experience was uh, completely positive. Um, and I, lo I love the idea of taking care of athletes at that level who are not professional yet. Um, and uh, so that's certainly a draw for me. Um, you know, going through residency, the desire to go into sports medicine in particular, um, you know, from the clinical aspect, I really enjoyed the arthroscopic and minimally invasive uh, management of injuries, as well as the open surgery. So that ability to do both and have a little bit of a larger spectrum of uh, uh, surgeries uh, that I perform and injuries that I treat uh, was uh, appealing to me. Um, you know, the other thing I always uh, tell my residents and fellows when you're a team physician, you're really that a physician to the community of people through that school, university, or organization that you're caring for. Um, and some people enjoy that, and some people find that daunting. Um, you get a lot of calls, um, you know, asking you to take a look at someone um, at halftime uh, who's unrelated necessarily maybe to the uh, sport uh, or the athletic department, but maybe peripherally uh, associated. Um, and I really enjoy that. I like being that person, that go-to, whether it's uh, in my specific area of subspecialty um, or not. I like being that person that they can come to um, and get guidance for their uh, orthopedic problems. Um, so in that, you maintain these kind of long-lasting relationships with patients and families, you know, athletes that have long since graduated uh, from the university um, have continue to reach out to me when they have an orthopedic problem, and that's something that I really enjoy. Um, I would say as well, um, athletics, as, certainly as you get in the higher levels uh, from college and then ultimately to the pro level, it is very time consuming outside of your uh, normal clinical practice. Um, and so it's something that you really have to enjoy. You have to enjoy attending sporting events. You have to enjoy going to the training room uh, and enjoy essentially being full time on call for these athletes um, in order to be able to help manage them and in a timely manner be able to address issues and get them back to their sport safely and as quickly as possible. So I really enjoy that and, and, and then ultimately that, that team effort um, that goes into taking care of athletes um, and uh, the university, uh, I really enjoy that. Um, to, to speak specifically to collegiate athletics, um, I certainly um, uh, enjoy and desire to take care of professional athletes. I, I currently uh, help my uh, partners who take care of the Sixers and the Phillies, so I help cover some games here and there for them, and I enjoy that level. Uh, the collegiate level is really something special because um, there is not that pressure from uh, agents um, and uh, the larger pressure from the organization and caring for those athletes. Um, you really are the go-to uh, person um, and you can really take care of them from A to Z. So from the inception of their injury to their management and ultimately surgery um, and recovery. Um, and I really enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah, those secondary um, non-medical issues, I guess, are 
less of a, uh, you know, obstacle or a priority, or however you want to see it. That's interesting. Yeah. So about being a collegiate team physician, what would you say, you've been doing it for a while now, what are your top five tips for success um, for those who are looking to get into this field? Yeah, so it's a great question. I'm talking about this all the time with my residents and fellows who are um, going into sport, sports medicine. Um, and I will tell you that the person who I um, hear in my uh, head when I think about what it means to be a great uh, team physician, whether it's collegiate, high school, um, or professional, is uh, Dr. James Andrews. I've heard him give several lectures on being a great team physician. And, you know, he really is the sports medicine physician of our time. Um, and uh, so he's someone who I really try to emulate um, and, and I take really to heart everything that he says and I found it to be 100% true. So um, the primary thing is availability. Um, and so when you listen to him talk and when I speak to my fellows, you know, if you had five tips for success, really numbers one, two, and three are availability. Um, if they can't reach you, if they call you and you don't pick up the phone, if they text you and you don't answer them or give them a call back, that is really the uh, number one thing that will lead to your um, demise as a team physician at any level. Um, so being available is of utmost importance. And this is one of those things where the teams that I take care of, if they email me, I get back to them almost instantaneously. If they call or text, I'm always available. It doesn't matter if it's night, weekend, et cetera. Um, so that, that's number one. The second thing really is um, being a good communicator. Um, you really need to be a good listener, one. Um, you need to hear the, the patient, the athlete. Um, you need to understand their concerns. You have to read them. You know, you have to know what their uh, maybe uh, concerns are that they're not uh, articulating um, what their real desires are. Um, and so that's really important. So being a good communicator is really essential. A little bit goes hand in hand with availability. I would say number three is all of those um, things that go along with compassion, empathy, um, making an athlete or a patient feel special, um, delivering care with, with respect for the patient. Um, and those are really important. And, and and you know, you'll note, Saka, that I, I, I really interchange patient and athlete. I think that it's really important that as team physicians, we don't uh, get confused and treat the patient as, you know, an athlete or a public figure. They, they really are a patient, and we need to really maintain that doctor-patient uh, relationship and, and really preserve that and respect it. Um, the fourth, fourth thing I would say, is being honest. So honesty is really, really important. I don't think that you can try to pull one over on, on the patient um, uh, or their athletic trainer or their coach or anyone for that matter. I think you have to be honest with, with what the nature of their injuries are, the risks that they're putting themselves um, uh, at if they continue playing. Um, being honest is really, really important. And I think that the uh, the patient and athlete um, respect you much more if you can just give it to them straight, so to speak. Um, and then the final thing I would say is that you always have to remember, you know, it's not just you, it's not about you. Um, you really have to be a team player. Um, and I would say when it comes to kind of ranking who's most important in the, the athlete's, you know, life um, as far as medical care, um, the athletic trainer is really that person that guides them. And as team physicians, we have to um, uh, give the athletic trainers their due. We have to show them respect. They oftentimes know much more about injuries and rehab and treatment than, than we do as orthopedic surgeons. Um, and so I always approach uh, taking care of athletes um, in the sense that I'm, I'm just a cog in the wheel. I'm a team player and I'm looking to those strength and conditioning coaches, the physical therapist, the athletic trainer, anyone else to help guide me how best to treat this um, uh, patient and how to get them back playing as quickly as possible. Great. So I'm going to, I guess, recap uh, our, um, your, your top five tips for success um, 
for a collegiate team position is what availability. If you had just availability, number one, two, and three, you kind of emphasize the you know importance of that. Number two, being a good communicator, especially a listener. Number three, um, demonstrating compassion, empathy, respect, treating them like your patients, not just an athlete for the team. And number four was honesty. Mm -hmm. And number five was, uh, you know, being a team player and recognizing that, um, you know, you have other individuals that are uh, important and play different roles and getting that patient better. So that's great stuff. Um, you know, even I guess after following these uh, and adhering to, the, to these principles, what are, what are some of the challenges that even you still face when managing collegiate athletes? Um, some important ones you think are worth mentioning to our listeners. Sure. Um, you know, I think that we always have to remember, I think number one would, for me, um, would be that your primary responsibility, of course, is to that, the patient, you know, the athlete. Um, but you have to manage, you know, the parents. Um, and then ultimately, also, you have to manage the team and the coaches. But remembering that always your number one priority is to the patient or the athlete. Um, and that's who you have to answer to. That's who you have to have those honest conversations with. But, you know, mom, dad, um, you know, extended family um, that, you know, based on their situation, um, and then team and coaches, you have to be able to discuss um, uh, management and treatment uh, with all of these uh, people, always getting um, always giving obviously the the patient and the athlete the uh, utmost respect and um, uh, you know kind of responsibility but that that can be challenging you know managing those different levels and then of course as we mentioned before you know when you go to the pro level you're also managing the agent and the media um, and and lots of other things um, but even at the collegiate um, level these things can be challenging um, and so it comes back to being a good communicator, having compassion, empathy, honesty, all these things are really important and kind of help in that challenge. Um, and then, you know, of course, when you have an athlete who has an injury, uh, for instance, and um, you feel that it's not in their best interest to continue playing, um, whether it's not in their um, best interest of their health or their long-term well-being, um, however, you know, the, the athlete you know, is insistent on playing, things like that. Um, coming back to that and managing that um, is certainly one of the great challenges of being a team physician. Um, th those are just challenging things because ultimately that athlete can't participate if you don't uh, give them the clearance to do so. Um, and so uh, there can be a lot of pressure associated with that. Um, but again, so I could like, you know, you know, everything comes back to those tips for success for being a team physician. Um, I, I've found that with those athletes, when you really show compassion, empathy, you're a good listener, you're really honest with them about the nature of their injuries, et cetera. Um, I think that that um, usually allows you to resolve those issues uh, in a way that everyone is satisfied with. And I think ultimately, you know, one has to remember, no matter what level of play it's at, I always encourage the athletes, if they are interested in, in obtaining another opinion, I never block them from that. I, I want them to feel comfortable with their treatment, with their care. Um, and so, again, you, you need to be humble as a team physician. Um, this is not, it's not about you. It's about them um, getting uh, the best care and feeling comfortable. Um, and so I always encourage that whenever uh, the athlete, and if the athlete requests it. Um, so we, we definitely help facilitate that um, and get them, you know, the care that they uh, desire um, to make them uh, comfortable with, with everything. And, you know, let's, let's be fair too, you know, just you have to be that person. You're, you're, you're the person who is responsible for the health and well-being of the athlete. And some can find that to be a really daunting kind of um, uh, responsibility. Um, so you have to, you have to prepare, identify kind of services, medical services um, that promote the safety of the athlete. You have to um, address things to help limit injury. Um, and you're the one providing care, whether at practice, competition, training room, um, et cetera, in the office. Um, certainly, 
um, this is a team approach and there are many other physicians and healthcare providers that can help to uh, do this. Uh, but as the head team physician, you are leading this charge. Um, and so that can be a challenge as well. Yeah, I could see how those are all challenges, even, even if you do everything right. Um, great stuff. So I guess I'm going to wrap up. I do have one more question um, that I was hoping you could address uh, before we close, which, uh, you know, what are some of the potential changes you see coming in the future that team physicians should anticipate and prepare for, uh, you know, either your own opinion or perhaps um, things being articulated and discussed in your subspecialty society and, um, you know, and, and similar groups uh, that's coming, you know, coming down the pike? Sure. Um, I think um, one of the things uh, is that many people are going to uh, more of a sports performance uh, platform. So St. Joseph's University has done this. They've uh, created uh, a high performance team. Um, and so that's really uh, an integrated team. So you're, you're focusing on the sports medicine aspect, strength and conditioning, the mental health, the nutrition, um, and the sports science to help uh, maximize uh, the athlete wellness and performance. Um, and so um, kind of understanding how that uh, is, uh, uh, how that's best integrated um, into the um, athletic department and in the care of the athletes. Um, I think that's something that we're definitely seeing. Um, I think that also the, the role of biologics um, in the treatment of collegiate athletes um, and athletes of all levels uh, but both non-op and operative treatments, you know, obviously at the collegiate level, certainly you have some, um, some universities who have uh, really endless um, funds, but there's also many programs who, even Division I, who don't have that, that um, luxury. And so you have to balance those uh, cost issues with the potential benefit. And so um, Certainly, that's something that is going to have continued uh, research, and we're going to continue to assess the um, appropriateness and utility um, in the care of these athletes. And then I think, you know, we can't forget um, the role uh, that this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has um, placed on sports at all levels. So obviously, you know, uh, in the short term, we've canceled all athletic activity. Um, and so really a, a more immediate concern is going to be uh, that once we start to ease restrictions, getting these athletes back, um, reconditioning them, um, and returning them back to sport uh, will be really at the forefront. Um, so I think that's going to be really interesting and important. Yeah, you know, I, it it was on my mind and uh, I'm glad you brought it up. It's obviously a very timely issue and uh, unforeseen obviously in the sports medicine world, but um, interesting to see how that's going to play out. But um, I'm sure you all are preparing for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're about out of time. Um, I've been uh, speaking with Dr. Summer Hamoud uh, from the Rothman Institute uh, and uh, Jefferson University Hospitals. He is head team physician for multiple programs um, that I mentioned before and will be on the podcast. We've been talking about management of collegiate athletes. Um, Summer, thank you very much. I really appreciate taking the time to come on the show. Thanks so much for having me.